This video briefly introduces two main virtues that arguments can have. Well, arguments, we say, can be valid or they can be sound. So let's explain what those terms mean. We say that an argument's valid if and only if it's impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false. Now, validity specifically applies to a virtue that's associated with logical form. So an argument's valid if and only if it's impossible by virtue of its formal characteristics, by virtue of its logical form, for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false. And that's we'll explore that a little bit now in this video, but um, this will be a topic of that'll be of central concern for us going forward. Logical form. So it's a formal property of arguments. Now, soundness is different. Soundness is about the truth or falsity of the parts of the argument. So it's more about the content of the argument than the form of the argument. And we we'll say that an argument is sound if and only if all of its premises are true and it's valid. So Soundness is an additional characteristic or an additional property of um, of arguments. So first, it's got to be valid. In order for it to be sound, it has to be not only valid but also true. And we'll talk. We'll say a little bit about that going forward. So let's go back to validity. So validity we'll see is a product of or it's a characteristic of arguments whereby the logical form of the argument is just right now as we saw we're going to have to figure out what validity is before we can talk about soundness because soundness is this extra virtue that arguments have over and above merely being formally correct so an argument is sound, we saw, if its propositions are true. An argument needs to be more than just formally correct to be sound because you can have a formally correct argument that's built out of false premises. So for example, if you said, um, if Bill Clinton is king of Sweden, then the moon is populated by Cylons. Bill Clinton is the king of Sweden, therefore the moon is populated by Cylons. Now that's a very simple little argument consisting of premises. The premise, you know, if Clinton is king, then the moon is populated by Cylons, and that of course is a sort of a conditional statement, so if A then B, that's one premise, it's sort of like a law of nature. If this is going to be the way it is, then that's going to be the way it is. The next premise is that, hey, it turns out, yes, Bill Clinton is king of Sweden. And then the conclusion that the moon is populated by Cylons would follow validly, if it were true, that Bill Clinton is the king of Sweden and if it were true that if he was the king of Sweden then the moon would be populated by Cylons. So you see that's a valid argument. We'll see that as it turns out that's a classically you know it's an example of, of a wonderfully valid argument so it's formally correct and yet it's not sound because it's composed of false sentences. So soundness is this additional property over and above just being formally correct that we'll explore a little bit in detail. But for now let's return to formal correctness because a lot of what we do in the study of logic is about the form of the arguments and not necessarily about the truth or falsity of the sentences involved. Now, Of course it's important to be concerned with the truth and falsity of the sentences in an argument but one of the skills that logic teaches is to attend to the form of the arguments and um, let's take a look at that. So what is the form of the argument? Well we've already seen that arguments have parts 
we've seen they have premises, inferences, and conclusions. Um, and we've seen that when we're evaluating arguments so far, that we're concerned with both the truth of the premises and the form of the argument. So what is it that's going to be of critical concern when we try to examine the form of an argument for validity? Well, as it turns out, we're going to be concerned primarily with the inferences, with the logical moves or the steps within the, the argument itself. So as you can see here, um, what we mean by lo logical steps or the legal moves in an argument are those moves that are you know, good by virtue of following good principles of reasoning. And we'll learn a little bit about what those good principles of reasoning are going forward. If an argument is composed formally of good inferences, then we'll end up saying that it's valid. We're going to say that arguments are valid if and only if it's impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false by virtue of their shape, by virtue of their form. This is one of the central concerns of this, of our study. In a case you know, where we have an invalid argument, and it's invalid by virtue of its form again. So let's take a look at this one. Someone saying, well, if it's raining, then the grass is wet. And we would say normally, yeah, you know, that's, that's true. If it's raining, the grass is wet. That's usually true, at least. Um, it turns out that it isn't raining. And that would be our second premise. So on the screen here, if it's raining, then the grass is wet. It isn't raining. And then the conclusion, therefore, the grass isn't wet. So the conclusion was arrived at by moving from these two premises here to a conclusion. Now what I've done with these little orange letters is begin to indicate the formal structure. Now what I mean by that is I'm taking the parts of the argument, as we'll see later when we study variables and how variables work, and I'm sort of giving you the sense for the structure of the argument. Um, so here we have a, a fallacious argument, and it's a fallacy or a f fallacious argument because it's got a bad form. And the, it's, a, it's got a bad form, and we'll study this in great detail going forward, because it's got counterexamples. So remember, what was our definition of validity? An argument's valid if and only if it's impossible by virtue of the form for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false. And here we have a case where it's clearly possible for the conclusion to be false while the premises are true. So if it's possible for the conclusion to be false while the premises are true, then we call that an invalid argument. One more time. If the conclusion could be false while the premises are true, then the argument as a whole is invalid. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, look, it's not necessarily the case that the grass isn't wet just because it isn't raining. So the grass in this case could be wet because the irrigation system is on. For example, let's say you lived in the desert southwest of the United States where people have irrigation systems. It rarely rains, but sometimes the grass is wet. So it's not true that if it isn't raining, then the grass, or sorry, it's not true that if it's raining, then the grass is wet and it isn't raining, therefore the grass isn't wet. That's not true because there are counterexamples. This notion of counterexample is going to be very important to us going forward. If there's a counterexample to the conclusion, given the truth of the premises, then the argument is invalid. I'm going to repeat that. It's worth repeating. If there's a counterexample to the conclusion, given the truth of the premises, then the argument is invalid. So if a conclusion doesn't follow necessarily, then it isn't logically implied. You've got a formally incorrect argument. So that was our discussion of soundness and validity.
Soundness, as we saw, is a property of arguments over and above validity. Validity has to do with the formal character of arguments, and we'll return to this topic in great detail, the topic of validity going forward.